Hey everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. I'm James. Today we are talking Harley Quinn and Mr. J the Joker. Joining me to discuss this is Andrew Fantasia. Andrew, thanks for joining me. You're welcome. I just realized you are also Mr. J. Do you want me to start calling you that from now on? Is yeah, that I've, I've been asking you to say that for about seven years is what I've been uh, saying. Call me Mr. J. <laughs> no, you can call me, uh, just call me sir. Just keep calling me sir and we'll be good to go. But look, I, the reason why I wanted to do this video and I wanted you to do it is because uh, when Matt Reeves first released that five minute clip of the Joker and Batman, oh, so unnamed Arkham prisoner mm -hmm. and Batman, uh, I think it got a pretty, it got like a, I don't know. I think the response was mostly positive, but there were people who weren't happy with the portrayal of the Joker and they didn't really like the way he looked. I thought it was pretty cool. I really, really dug the scene. I also understand and appreciate why it was cut. So I'm kind of like, I'm just glad I got to watch it. But that being said, this is the Joker that lives in that universe because he does appear in the scene later on in the Batman. We get him later on in the Batman. So that Joker is, is who we think. And he exists in the way that we see him exist. And people brought up, like, how could Harley Quinn, how could Dr. Harleen Quinzel fall for someone like this, for someone who looks as grotesque as this? And I started, I looked at it and I said, well, I mean, we've, we're, we've been engrossed with stories about this our entire lives. We like, this is every, every, uh, every um, fantasy story ever told, fairy tale that we've ever heard has, this has basically been what it's been about. This is your beast to the beat. Jack Nicholson states it in the first bat, and not bat, not the first bat, and in Batman eighty nine, Beauty and the Beast. I mean, he's referring to Vicky Vale as the Beast, of course, in that one. <laughs> but we have got, but we have gotten this was not out of the realm of possibilities that this could that this could take place. I don't suspect Andrew that we would get this in a Batman sequel or a third threequel or anything along the lines. However, with Matt Reeves making this Arkham Asylum show. There have been hints that maybe this Joker character will appear on that show. And we kind of talked about this briefly a little while ago. I think that Harley Quinn should be in the Arkham Asylum show. Hugo Strange and Harley Quinn definitely should be in the show. Uh, so before we get into it, what do you think? Do you think we will see a Harley Quinn in the Reeves verse? If we do, I agree. It's going to be in the show. That's a perfect place to put her. Because as far as I know, besides Hugo Strange, she's the only villain who has ties to Arkham before she becomes evil. You know, like, you know, Harvey Dent really doesn't have anything to do with Arkham, whatever. Like, it, it's like her whole origin comes from being at Arkham and working there. And then when she's a criminal, she gets locked up there. So Arkham is kind of, she's always orbiting it. You always see Harley, she's probably got her own timeshare there by now. Like, it's just like a place you punch a card, five incarcerations and the sixth one's free. So that's a great place to put Harley. It's a great place for us to meet her. And I think meeting her in a long-term way, like in a show, is a little bit more to her benefit than meeting her in the movie. I agree. I also kind of hope that this show takes place before the events of the Batman because so that the Riddler is not mm -hmm. in Arkham. So we don't have to ignore the Riddler being there because you're not going to get the Riddler in that. You might, but I don't want the Riddler in that show. I want the Riddler to stick with the, the movie universe. So I, here's my thing. <clears throat> here's how, I'm, here's how I, this is what I'm thinking. So let me know how, where you are on this. You start off before the movie and the Joker's already been there for X amount of time. So you can go from wherever to wherever until the first movie is. That's fine. And Har Dr. Harleen Quinzel could be a doctor that sees him and visits Mr. J, the Joker, the unnamed Arkham prisoner in, in prison, and works on him and talks with him and kind of gets to know him and whatnot. And, you know, we were watching this psychology video and, and Harley Quinn's parents, right? One is a good natured, the mom is good natured, and the dad is a, a liar, right? A, a con man of sorts. And they say that the child, the offspring of those two, will either see the good in people or try, hope to see the good in people or always see the bad. And I like in this world, Andrew, that Harley Quinn would look for the good in this Joker character because, because he was born with this disease, as Matt Reeves has said, he, she would see him as a sympathetic character. He might, he doesn't see himself as that, but he could use that to lure in uh, Dr. Quinzel. And in doing so, they could have this relationship. And I don't even think in, right away in the show, she needs to go full Harley Quinn. She could stay doctor for a while. But the show could even be on one level about her slow decline into madness. Her love for for the Joker, the unnamed 
Arkham Prisoner could go so deep that we could see her come out the other side. So on one hand, the first half of this would play out like a Phantom of the Opera or Beauty and the Beast. But the second half, she would become the very thing that she fell in love with. And it would be a slow decline because she wants to trust him so much that eventually love is blind and she gets there and it, it's the rug, rug gets swept from under her. The other thing, though, the, the one thing with Harley Quinn, though, is they don't really know if they want her to be a good guy or a bad guy for me. For this one, you keep her, uh, you keep her sanity low, and you make her full fledged uh, bad. And the thing, Andrew, and then when it leads into the Batman, now you have the Riddler and the Joker. And at some point, Harley Quinzel or Harley Quinn, wherever she would be at this point, would help in the aiding and abetting of getting the Joker out of there, which could in turn help get the Riddler out of there. So you could set that all up because they're not. I mean. I'm, unless you don't plan on using the Riddler in any more movies, he's got to get out of Arkham. So this also gives you your leeway to get him out uh, with using the Arkham show as a way to show how you're going to get him out of there. Hey, you know, I'm on board with any plan that involves getting the Riddler out of Arkham and putting him back on the streets. Right. I, I do. I got to point out one thing. I do know the paperclip. I do know the paperclip, and I know that that's, but we, that, you know, that's not in the movie anymore, so we got to remember the paperclip scene doesn't exist in the canonical events of what takes place. So I'm just thinking use Harley Quinn as the paperclip, essentially, is what right. I'm saying. She'll wear a, a dress that's covered in paperclips. Um, yeah. I hope it takes a lot of pages out of Beauty and the Beast book, man, because that sounds like a fun ride. Even the singing. Why not? I have a scene where they're snowball fighting. And she's just like, there's something strange and almost kind. And then we, we just go all out. There's a talking clock for some reason. Um, I love the idea of this being a slow burn. Um, and I, I like that this Joker, like we've had three Jokers in the past decade and a half, and they've all been very good looking men. So I like that this one is a monster, right? Like he just looks like a monster. He looks hideous. Joker should look like he stinks. That's that's the way I feel. Like he should look like you get near him and you're like, oh God. Like, and this is the first one that's really given off that vibe. Um, I like the idea of her seeing that. I think this this psychologist really is hitting the nail on the head there. Being unable to uh see the forest or the trees essentially, because she's looking right past that face and those teeth and that hair to the man underneath, and somehow. The damage that's part of Quinn, because we have to remember, yes, she is seeing the good in a person, which is something to be like, oh, that's nice of her. But we have to remember, there's no good in the Joker. So what she's seeing is a lie. And that tells us a lot about her, too. So it creates this interesting back and forth that I think is better suited. Again, I don't know, because Matt Reeves is making long movies. So who knows? Maybe it, it can fit in a three hour film. But the Arkham show is a better place to put it. It just feels more right. And I wouldn't be surprised, James, if when she stops being Harleen and, and emerges as Harley Quinn, because of how dark this world is, what I would love to see, because Harley Quinn is a beautiful lady and they're going to cast a beautiful lady. I would love to see, in order for her to go full villain and be like, yes, Joker, I'm with you 100%. She messes up her own face to look like him. Yeah, I think so. And I think that the way you were saying is, I think with his disease that he was born with, I think that's where she she will see a vulnerable side to him that doesn't exist. But because that aspect of him is there, she's going to force herself to see that. And she's going to make it up in her own mind that mm -hmm. he is, that he's damaged internally because of the way he was born <clears throat> i think it works out i love that idea that she would do some damage to herself as well um and i think they i don't think they would shy away from that either in this but i think it, i think the reason why it works better in an arkham show than than the batman too is the batman world needs to focus on gotham and batman and that's what it needs to focus on and while these takes place in there these are more solo they don't affect each other right the events yeah. of, of of the joker don't affect gotham and they don't affect the batman in a large scale the way that the riddler was the riddler affected gotham in that he was trying to take take out gotham 
right? Whereas the Joker lives within it. So I think that's where it works better in an Arkham series, just like the Penguin, right? The Penguin show is going to be about him uh, rising to power, becoming Scarface or whatever, whereas that doesn't really affect <laughs> the overall story. So it works better that way. I, I love it. I don't know if they're going to do I think it would make – I just think the, the, the problem with Harley Quinn and the Arkham show is – and I don't know if he's gonna if, if Matt Reeves would shy away from it or not, but you're not gonna get Margot Robbie. And the thing is, I actually think Margot Robbie would shine in this version of Harley Quinn, and it's almost unfortunate that she wouldn't be the one to do it. That being said, where she could work is in a Joaquin Phoenix sequel, Joker. I mean, I think they would still have to recast over there because you don't. It's just a confusion that they don't want to give people. I think. Yeah. But I think I think a Harley Quinn in that world as well is the exact same as in this one, and they're having script difficulties. Just throwing a love interest because we know because he's kind of in Arkham in that at the end. It depends on how you view it, right? So he and he escapes at the end, but maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's there. So you could throw in a Harley, a Doctor Harley and Quinzel in the Joker two with Joaquin Phoenix, and you can have a really interesting dynamic there. Like Willem Dafoe said, what if we had competing Jokers? Well, what if all of a sudden, instead of competing Jokers, you had the female side of the coin and it's his doctor and you can, and that's the story this time is like how this doctor fell for, for Arthur Flex Joker. Is an Arthur Fleck two like happening for real or is that still? Just... Yeah, they're, they're working on the script. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, well, I think I think we're going to hit a turning point in a month because once Multiverse of Madness comes out, if it does the job right, then casting Margot Robbie in one of these two, whether it's Reeves or, or Arthur Fleck, whatever, it won't feel too confusing, right? Because Multiverse is going to become a bigger and bigger household name. Uh, there's a, there's a movie coming out in a week that I can't wait to see with Michelle Yeoh. That's about a multiverse called Everything Everywhere All at Once. So it's becoming it more and more popular. Ooh, it. even better. No, no the problem the problem isn't that. It's it's. I don't think the filmmakers are going to use a known name associated with that. They want to start their own thing. Especially Matt Reeves. I can't see I can't see Matt Reeves going after. I don't even know if Matt Reeves is interested in using Harley Quinn. I just think that it would be a nice. It, it could be a good, fun, strong element to to use the Joker in a way that hasn't been used in the films before. And then maybe, you know, maybe he doesn't even get out of prison and Harley Quinn is the Joker of the Reeves verse. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that could be uh, the way they play it. But I personally, I think that Harley Quinn can enhance the, the Barry Cohen version and also the Joaquin Phoenix version. I think that's, that is an element that they could throw in there that would really add some intrigue to, to the character that we, ha it's just, it's about have what have we not seen before with the Joker and the, you know, and Barry Keoghan is okay. If he's always in the background, that's fine. And you know, I, I'm going to do a video on this later, but you know where I want him to go in this story. I don't ever want him to be the big bad, but I want him to kind of hover around like a rain cloud and just kind of like, you don't know when the lightning is going to strike mm -hmm. and eventually it will. That's what I really, that's what I want from the Joker. Whereas the Joaquin Phoenix one, I didn't want a sequel. I was like, <laughs> you know, I was like, well, this is fine the way it is. And then apparently Todd Phillips wanted that to be a trilogy originally at some point. So I just, I think for that one, like why not go full, full into Harley Quinn and, and have the relationship between Arthur Fleck and his psychologist. Why not go that way? Like have her in that respect, right? Have her examining him throughout the movie and play it that way for at least a part of it. I, I don't, I don't really know what they're doing over there, but the Barry Keel and one people were saying he's too grotesque. And that's to me, that's like the most obvious reason why you would have yes. Harley Quinn in this movie. Agreed. Uh, I want that because that sounds like a more interesting story than if she meets Arthur Fleck. If she meets Arthur Fleck, it's fine. It just sounds, it sounds like the cartoon, uh, which I know that's not a bad thing, but this would be something different. It would be a really cool, dark twist on Harley. Um, a fun thought experiment for this though is like, if they put Harley in the Matt Reeves verse, what kind of costume would they give her? Yeah, that I don't even know what costume they give her the Joker yet. So I think it'd be something. <laughs> it wouldn't be a court jester, I don't think. But she hasn't. You know, I really like the way she looked in the first half of the Suicide Squad, where she kind of had the jester colors and she was wearing like I think it was leather, and then then they made her wear the dress. Uh, I really like that. I don't know what they would. I think they would have her. 
probably just keeping like scrubs, but they would be like two different color scrubs and like sewn together or something crazy like that. Yeah. It'd be very simple, like a lab coat with like blood stains on it on one half, probably. Yeah, that sounds know. right. Yeah, but I but I, what I love though is I think this what this Batman the the Pattinson Batman has is he sees is is very he's very empathetic towards his villains. He sees that, and I think that would play out with Harley Quinn. Well, like it's playing out with Catwoman, and I think. Because Harley Quinn has empathy for for the Joker, I think he would kind of see that and understand, like, oh, you are a lost soul because of this clown. No pun intended. I think that's how he would feel, and that would add, and that and it's just like if you got to that point, that adds another dimension onto the Batman storyline within, you know, the Court of Owls storyline mm-hmm. or whatever storyline they're telling. Like, it adds another element to that that I think would be fascinating. Yeah, and if they want to continue playing with the dichotomy of like, here's a villain and here's how they're the same as Batman, she could, you know, the way she looks up to the Joker and emulates Joker could be echoed in the way Catwoman is trying to be like her own version of Batman. And maybe that ends up hurting her. Maybe Catwoman gets in in over her head and uh, Batman or whoever Gordon Alfred starts seeing the parallels and, and Catwoman's got her own thing going on and she's got to get out of it. You could really you could really play with some fun stuff in there. I still want you know other people to be the main focus. I still want, like you said, the courts, the owls, the riddlers of it all, the Mr. Freezes, what killed the dinosaurs. But this is a cool little thing to be happening on the side, especially if uh like those rumors were saying a couple weeks ago that a lot of Catwoman stuff is going to be happening on the HBO series too, then there you go. Yeah. I think, I, I think you throw this out there and I love, I, you know, um, court of owls, it's they're, <laughs> they're coming in hot. I, I don't know. Maybe not. You know what? I kind of, I'm going to do a video. There's another video coming on the channel about the court of owls. And I just don't know if we're going to see them now because everybody has been speculating on them. And even the cast is talking about them. And it's almost like, well, if you're going to do them, you're just going to, but, like, why would you let the cast talk about them this early? But we'll find out that happens when it comes. For me, look, this Harley Quinn thing makes the most sense with this version of the Joker. It could be a really touching story, a really disturbing story. Uh, this could be the closest thing. Like, this is what, you know, you watch on, like, those, uh, how to not how to make a murder, but those, like, documentaries on, like, this person fell in love with the devil. You're like, what? Yeah. That's what this could be more than anything. Because I like it that, I mean, you know, the, the other versions I've liked, but this isn't just going into a vat of acid. This is your own free will allowing yourself to fall deep, deeper and deeper and deeper. And every day you see him, you go deeper and deeper and deeper. And it's yourself that's losing your own mind because you're allowing it to happen. And, you know, maybe they'll add another dark element to her or something. Who knows? But, you know, she, she just wants to see who this guy is. And she believes that there's a good in him. And as the long, the more she gets to know him, the more she she believes that, believes that, believes that, and then all of a sudden she comes up on the other side, and now someone has to find the good in her. And maybe that's Batman. Or Poison Ivy, because we know they're BFFs. I still don't think I want Poison Ivy in the Reeves verse. I want Poison Ivy. I do want Poison Ivy, but I don't want Poison Ivy. I just think in this universe, it might be a little too camp and uh, cheesy. And at some Even point, just you superpowers gotta say- in general, they feel weird here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Like, I, I, I love this movie and, and everything, but I, I kind of still wish we could. I wish they could have two Batman movies running parallel with each other, one for like the big boys and girls, and one for like the kids, <laughs> where they have superpowers and they jump off roofs and like skydiving. Like that's what you know. Like I like, I like, I just want both. Go side by side. Give me both. Bring the bat fuck Batman on HBO Max. Do it over there. Whatever. <laughs> that's that. That's where I am. I'm just. That's how I feel. I kind of want um I want my cake and eat it too. I say that a lot, but that's what I, that's what hey, I want. I mean, I, multiverse is literally the definition of that. So I think you're getting your wish there, buddy. Well, the rumor is the DC uh crisis of inf- on infinite earths is coming and uh, finally. Yeah, we'll see what happens there. They've got so much going on, so many changes. But anyway, we're going to wrap it up right now, Andrew. Show me your book. This is my book. It's like this except normally it's right side up. It's called Side Scroller. <laughs> And you can buy it on Amazon right now. I wrote it. It's an adventure slash sci-fi slash romance. And if you like any of those, 
then you're in the right place as we were just talking about Harley Quinn and the Joker for a long time. So check this out. It does not have clowns in it, though. I apologize. Get it on Kobo. All right. And uh, you're also on YouTube at youtube.com slash Andrew Fantasia. And you can check us talking about Star Wars and Rebel Scum once in a while. Uh, but thank you all so much for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe. I should have said that off the top. And until next time. Okay, they know. May, yeah, they know. May, may you be the master of your own universe. Mr. J.